to go. Hello all, and yes, this is a little late, but I decided to make this video more than just about Final Battle. Um, and in truth, I had hoped to do this video um, a little late because I was waiting for the uh, Tokyo Dome complete show to be announced, which it was for the most part. And um, and then I decided, you know what, I'll just go ahead and throw the other stuff that I'm going to throw on here as well. Um, but anyways, uh, we will get started. Let's actually start with uh, Chikara. Um, they had an eye per view last weekend too. This was a crazy weekend last weekend. Um, you had um, you know their season finale. Chikara kind of does their their stuff in uh, in seasons, and so this was their season finale. You know, a lot of people were very excited. I was too when Chikara came back. Um, a lot of hopes. And then I think everything was going pretty well, and then King of Trios happened, and it wasn't what people expected, and I think it kind of, people got sour on Chikara. This was, you know, their eye pay per view and, um, and yeah, so, <coughs> let's, let's get into this. This wasn't as good as I would have hoped, and I don't think it was probably, it was, eh, we'll get into it. Um, the pre-show, which was for the Young Lions Cup, which is kind of this, you know, um, it's like the up and comer, it's like the new guy type of thing. Though what we got was a, and this is kind of interesting, just because it's Chikara. Um, we got intergender match, um, Heidi Lovelace versus Missile Saltian, and it, within the realm of Chikara, what Chikara's done, you know, intergender matches for forever, and um, they usually work because it's like in the realm of Chikara and it kind of works and it's 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 Chikara. Um, then when people try to do it outside of Jakara, they try to do like the Jakara thing, and it really doesn't work because it's not Jakara, and they're not doing the same type of things Jakara does, which is they made this match kind of weird because they did kind of more of what you would expect an intergender match to be um, instead of what they usually are in Jakara. So the kind of match was still okay, um, and it was what it was, but um, yeah, it was kind of weird. Just there we go. Then the actual opener to the show um, was. Juan Francisco taking on Del Coronado, I believe that's his name, taking on Ashley Remington um, in a match where I think the, uh, the stip kind of hurt it. You could only pin your opponent after a German suplex, and so that kind of hurt the stip a little bit. The match wasn't as good as I think it could have been. Um, it was not even really okay. It was just kind of there, I felt, and didn't really start things off really well. Uh, then you had Eddie Kingston taking on Jimmy Jacobs which I would have thought would have been better than it was, but again, it was just kind of there, though. There was, you know, some good storyline stuff that, you know, if you watch Chikara, um, and if you like the kind of the stuff Chikara does, you, you get that, and, and, and a lot of matches are usually, you know, kind of, the matches that aren't usually very good usually have a very strong storyline element to them, um, and, yeah, this, this had that, but still you would have expected better out of these two than what we got. Um, then you had Devastation Incorporation, or Devastation Corporation, um, and throwbacks and uh, for the tag titles, which originally, you know, were kind of what the major titles for or the major title for Chikara was. And this definitely stole the show, in my opinion. A really good uh, two out of three falls match, and kind of this is the kind of match that really kind of just emphasizes why I think that if you're going to do an Iron Man match less than or you know an hour then it needs, you know, just do a two out of three falls match, because this worked, this worked good, it was great, and, um, yeah, it was definitely the match, the, the, the match of the night, um, then you had Delirious taking all three minutes, like, this was the match I was looking very forward to, because I love Delirious, I've always, I kind of like this storyline, even though with Delirious, you know, uh, booking ROH, they haven't really been able to do this as well as I think they wanted to, um, they did it here, the stip was whoever lost would leave, um, Chikara, and of course, you know, Ultraman and Spike was not going to lose that, so Delirious lost. Um, the match itself wasn't, very, it was okay. It wasn't as good as I would have hoped. I, I really thought these guys could have, you know, really done some really good stuff. It's a little overbooked, but not not anything you would expect. Um, after the match, though, you had some really good kind of storyline where uh, Delirious, who still has the um, I of Tear, used the I of Tear to take this special envoy and turn them against Ultraman Spike, which was kind of Cool. Um, then you had um, the Cybernetico Battle Royal. Um, I was kind of kind of curious how this was going to work because um, you know Cybernetico's usually are very long matches, 
and I didn't know how long they would do this. And this wasn't very long. It was still good. It wasn't as good as it could have been. Um, the story of the match worked out really well, so there was that. Uh, then you had um, Desolution, I believe is his name, taking on Icarus. Um, wasn't for the title, which I thought was a little goofy, and I thought that meant that Icarus was going to lose in a cage match, which is not something they normally do. A match was good. Um, it wasn't great, um, but it was it was good, and 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 overall the the pay per view was enjoyable. It just wasn't as good as it probably needed to be. Um, so there you go. There. Then we had the New Japan World Tag League final show. This was in fact the last. Um, of the old iPay-Per-View stuff. From now on, everything will be on uh, New Japan World, <coughs> which you can get for 999 yen. I'm not making that up. Um, and all of their shows are going to be on there, which um, which should be good. Uh, this show was, for New Japan's um, standards, was pretty lackluster. Um, there, are, there are actually minor um, iPay-Per-Views and kind of kind of in-between shows, in-between major uh, pay-per-view shows that they've done that this year that have been better than this. Um, this always is kind of the setup for um, the, the Tokyo Dome anyways. Um, this is kind of where they set everything up. And um, and also their tag division hasn't been very good. Um, if there's one, there's really one area where New Japan really hasn't been as good as you would hope they would be. It is in the tag uh, divisions. Um, which is kind of weird, given that they have, you know, the the you've got the regular heavyweight champions, and then you've got the NWA champions as well, and so you would expect it to be very deep, and it's not. And I really wish that that this this is where the tag division is really where I wish I wish they would bring in more outsiders because I think that it's a really good way to bring in outsiders and um, see if they can get over and, and just kind of you know do that, particularly if. We'll get, we'll get to that later. Um, but anyways, um, the show itself was, like I said, more of a setup. Um, you had uh, Show Tanaka taking on um, Tamutsu. Uh, this was okay. Um, like most of their matches, I feel was okay. You can definitely see that there's something with these guys. These are like the young, young, young guys for New Japan. So there you go. Then you had Tiger Mask and Ibushi taking on uh, Taguchi and uh, El Desperado. This was okay. Um, nothing great. Uh, it was just kind of there. Um, then you had uh, Yuji Nagata and Nakanishi taking on Lance Archer and David Boy Smith Jr. This again was just kind of there. It was okay. Um, really didn't do anything for me. Um, you know, it's really hard when you have Nakanishi in a match. Not that not that Nagata is bad, but when you have that, it really just makes it hard. Uh, then you had Jujin Thunder Liger and Captain New Japan taking on Matt Taven and Michael Bennett, of course, with Maria. And Maria was kind of the star of the show here. Um, you know, if you, if you have seen the last time she was on the show um, and and the way that they did the camera angles and the camera shots, um, they did it even more here. So, <coughs> so that made it interesting, uh, to say the least. You had the basic uh, story that they've always had with this. Uh, Captain New Japan is just like entrenched, doesn't know what to make of uh, Maria and her um, her gyrations and all that sort of thing. It's kind of weird to see, um, and like I've continually said when people were all upset because they felt like Michael Bennett was getting a shot um, when at, with New Japan where they thought other people should, and I was like, it's not Michael Bennett, it is Maria. And you can definitely see that, that she's like the focal point, she's the one that they focus on, on during the shows. So there was that. Um, match was okay. It was kind of funny. They did some did some stuff. So there you go. Um, after the match, um, Desperado came out and took the NWA Junior Heavyweight title from uh, Liger and, and, and stole it. And I'm sure probably the the show after the Tokyo Dome show, which will air, which is kind of like the, the, the Raw after WrestleMania, um, we'll probably get a match with them. Um, I would imagine a lot of the secondary matches that we're not getting on the Tokyo Dome show because of the time will probably get on that show, I would think. We will see. Um, we had Tenzon and Kojima taking on Rob Conway and Jax Dane. It was okay. It was nothing nothing to write home about. Then we finally got into some good stuff. Um, you got uh, Sakuraba and Yano and Ghetto taking on uh, Suzuki. 
um, Azuka and Takamichi Noku. This was this was good. This was enjoyable. I liked this. Uh, after the match, you had uh, Yano getting killed by the Killer Elite Squad, um, and we'll get into that later. And that will probably set up a match for the Tokyo Dome. Um, then you had Naito and Hanma and uh, Taguchi taking on AJ Styles, Bad Luck Fale, and uh, Yujiro. Uh, this was good too. Um, this was enjoyable. Nothing, nothing that would that would you know. And again. It was basically just to set up more stuff for the Tokyo Dome. So, um, you know, the AJ Styles and Naito stuff, the Hanma and, and the rest of the uh, Bullet Club. So, there you go. And you had Tanahashi, Makabe, and Abushi, and Lasombro taking on Okada, uh, Nakamura, Ishii, and Yoshihashi. This was real. This was good too. This was this was a fun little match. Um, again, basically setting up the Tokyo Dome show uh, where uh, they. They had Okada basically stretch her out um, Tanahashi, uh, which is not something they normally do. So it you know probably add a lot to the Tokyo Dome match, I would think. Um, and then you had the main event, which was the uh, Tag World Finals. Um, you had Goto and Shibata taking on Carl Anderson and Doc Gallows. This was good, not great. Um, <coughs> you know, I, I I'm not a big I get why Carl Anderson and Doc Gallows are the champions, though I I will tell you I think that given what they are, I think one of the biggest things that hurts them is that you have Lance Archer and Davey Boy Smith Jr. who are so much better, and they're on the same roster, and so it just it feels like they should be kind of the foreign team, but because of the Bullet Club, they're not. The matches just aren't as good. Um, Goto and Shibata, their tag matches are they're, they're okay. Um, I would expect them to win. Because basically they won here, which means they get a, the tag title shot at the Tokyo Dome. Which the Tokyo Dome show will be as follows. Let's see. Let's bring that up. I can bring it up. Da, 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 da. No, I'm not going to let me bring it up. Come on. Come on. Hello. Hello. There we go. There we go. Let's see. Tokyo Dome. And um, the dark match for the well, for those of you who don't know, um, if you get uh, New Japan World, which is all in Japanese, so but if you look on the internet, you can find ways to to set up to walk you through how to set up for it. <coughs> um, the Tokyo Dome show will be um, uh, will be shown there for like I said, nine hundred nine nine yen, um, but that will only be the uh, the Japanese version. It will not be the English version with Jim Ross. Um, and if you do that. Um, you will get a pre-show, which is the New Japan Rumble. Not quite sure what it's going to be. It's going to be a Royal Rumble type match. Um, gauntlet type something. Um, we'll see once once that happens. But um, that was the first thing. We don't even know who's going to be in it yet. So it, it's just more of a match to get everybody on the card, kind of like the, uh, they do at uh, WrestleMania. Uh, the opener will be Red Dragon taking on Forever Hooligans. Time Splitters and the Young Bucks for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight titles. Um, that match, if they give it enough time, should be really, really good, I would think. Then you're going to have the Bullet Club of Bad Luck Folly, Jeff Jarrett. Yes, that Jeff Jarrett. Um, and Yujiro taking on Tenzan, um, and Kojima, uh, and Hanma. A lot of that has to do with um, the fact that uh, um, uh, Yoshi Hot, Yoshi Tatsu took the Styles Clash wrong, and um, he tucked his head. You're not supposed to tuck your head when you take the Styles Clash in, and uh, pretty much broke his neck. So, not bad, but, you know, he, he definitely will be out for a while. So, there is that. Um, then you have Yano and a and Mr. X, which is, you know, a mystery opponent taking on some show, something from, some duo from Suzuki Gun, which will probably be Killer Elite Squad, so there. Then we'll have Suzuki taking on uh, Sakuraba in a, uh, in a match that can only end in knockout or submission. So, And that should be pretty good, I would think. That could be either really good or it'll just kind of be there, but that's kind of, you know, that's your, your attraction type of match. Then you have Ishii taking on Makabe for the Never Heavyweight title. That should be really good. Um, that'll just be two guys just pounding on each other. Um, then you have, uh, for the junior heavyweight title, you have uh, Taguchi taking on Kenny Omega. Imagine Kenny Omega will go over here. This match should be good, I would think. Uh, then you have, as I said, you have the Bullet Club of uh, 
Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson taking on Goto and Shibata. I would imagine Goto and Shibata go over here. They will probably be the tag titles. And again, with them as your champions, I think you can bring in some outside guys, have them kind of def you know go after the titles um, and try to strengthen up um, the tag team division. Because again, like I said, the tag team division is pretty lackluster. That's one of the reasons why the show um, wasn't very good, um, to be honest. Or was good, but eh, I don't know. Was okay. Uh, then you have AJ Styles versus Naito. Um, that should be really good, I would think. Then you have Nakamura versus Kuro Ibushi. That should be really good to great. And then of course you have Tanahashi and Okada, who are awesome. So there, there you go. Um, like I said, you can order it uh, on New Japan World if you don't mind the Japanese commentary. If you want to hear Jim Ross, and I will be honest, I do want to hear Jim Ross. Uh, just, just Ishii and Makabe is the only match I really want to hear him do because I, I'm just curious what he's going to think of an Ishii match. Um, on pay-per-view through, you know, uh, Global Force Wrestling and all of that stuff. So there we go there. Okay. Then you had Final Battle. And Final Battle, I thought, was, was it was definitely a great pay-per-view. <coughs> but I definitely felt it was missing something. Um, I heard, I saw a lot of people on, on Twitter questioning, you know, kind of upset that this wasn't in the Manhattan Center um, or the Hammerstein Ballroom. And the reason for that, for those of you not aware, is after the first set of tapings TNA did um, there, uh, which they had already jacked the price up to run there, was where it was for Ring of Opera, pretty much anybody, um, you know, to run that building um, was virtually impossible to make any source of money. Um, and Ray and Monter was pretty much breaking even if they came close to sell, selling out. If they sold out, they made a little bit of money. Well, they raised the price again, so there was no way Ray and Monter was going to be able to make money, so they moved to uh, wherever this place was, I, 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 Section 5 or um, Station 5 or something like that. But that's why it was basically just, you know, even TNA running there, they're not going to make any money on those tapings. There is no way they can make any money on those tapings running there. So just just to throw that out there. Um, but the show itself was, like I said, there was a lot of really, there was, if you look at the star ratings, you'd be like, oh, my God. Um, but the show just seemed to be lacking something. Um, <coughs> star power probably being a lot of it. Um, there was no AJ Styles. Um, there was no, you know, there just wasn't what you would hope for on the show. The show was really good though, and it was, you know, but anyway, so the opener was Mark Briscoe taking on uh, Caprice Coleman, taking on Jimmy Jacobs, taking on Hanson. This was good-ish. Um, this was, when it got closer to the end, it was very evident this was a way to try to, you know, get Hanson over even more. He's a big guy, and um, yeah, and for that part, it did pretty good. There's a bunch of dives, a bunch of your basic four-way. So it wasn't too bad. Then you had Adam Page versus Robert Strong. I think I liked this more than a lot of people did, apparently. Um, I liked the story. It was Adam Page kind of being the young boy taking on Roderick Strong. Um, and uh, they finished it with Roderick Strong going over without... Um, and Adam Page didn't tap. Um, this worked really well. I really liked this match. It was hard-hitting, and it was and it told a pretty good story. Then you had uh, Tommaso Ciampa taking on Michael Elgin, which before the whole Elgin stuff happened, um, was probably going to be the main event. Um, the crowd wasn't into this very much, and this was basically two just guys just beating the tar out of each other. And um, so it didn't come off nearly as good as I think it could have. <coughs> um, and um, I, I think I don't I think the crowd likes Ciampa more as a heel than he they do as a babyface, and I think they just don't know what to make of Michael Elgin. So it just didn't work, even though the match itself was, was, was probably okay, but it was just kind of, it was, yeah. Then you had uh, Cedric Alexander um, uh, and the Addiction taking on ACH and the Young Bucks. This was the definition of a spot fest. Not in a bad way. It was pretty, you know, Dragon Gate-esque, I would almost say. Um, lots of running around, doing all sorts of stuff. Um, was great. was a great spectacle match, and um, yeah. Pretty much there you go. Then you had Moose versus Artie Evans, which was kind of a revenge match. Um, this match went about seven minutes and probably still went about five minutes too long, given that everybody knew it was going to end in some fuck finish, and it did. And so it was kind of just like, eh. But, I, you know, it was meant to kind of bring the crowd down and, and, and give them a break after the six-man, which was crazy. Then you had Matt Seidel versus Jay Lethal. Again, the crowd wasn't 
that into this match. The ending to this match is insane. It's something to see. The ending spot. Um, Matt Seidel, you know, definitely has gotten, I, I would say, better. Um, but I, I still don't I don't think he's wrestled in Ring of Honor enough for the crowd to really be that much behind him. It was kind of like, ooh, it's Matt Seidel, and then, you know, there you go. Uh, then you have the Time Splitters versus Rick Dragon. This was great. Um, this reminded me a lot more of their first match in New Japan. Um, so it wasn't, like, super great. It was just kind of just great. And then you had Adam Cole versus Jake Briscoe. Um, this was crazy violent. Um, this was meant to be, you know, kind of a blow off to their feud. Um, they, you had Jay Briscoe getting stapled, um, with a staple gun and they put paper and the, he's wrestling with the papers coming off his head, which is a crazy visual. Um, they both bladed, um, all sorts of crazy chair shots. Um, some people aren't going to like this because of that. Some people aren't going to like it because of the state. I mean, it was just, it was a crazy, crazy, crazy match. Um, but it's still great. It's told. It actually told a pretty good story, um, even for a hardcore match. Um, I thought it was better than the ladder war thing um, that they did, which I, I didn't think came off quite as well. But um, yeah, overall, I, I thought it's still a pay per view to check out. Probably not as great as um, a lot of people would have hoped. But um, I think it just again, you know, when when our yeah, it is what it is. But anyways, so. There we go. That's everything there is. Um, like I said, you know, the next, you know, we've got what? Um, you've got the NXT show coming up this week, which uh, looks like it should be really, really good. And then you've got what? You've got then uh, TLC is this weekend, which uh, does anyone even care about that show? I understand this on the network, and WWE doesn't give a damn about pay per views. It doesn't seem anymore, but, you know, and the pay per views are coming off like, you know, um, just another three-hour raw, which is like, uh, who cares, um, you know? But you got the Tokyo Dome coming up um, January fourth. Um, that should be a great, great show. If, if I, I would definitely say recommend checking it out, spending your money on it. You heard me right, spending your money on it. not just watching the show, but spending your money on the show. Um, either, either, either because you want you want to see ja you want to see New Japan um, give more. Um, English commentary, which, you know, buy the English version of it, or you just want to support New Japan, which you don't care about the English, which you can easily, you know, do New Japan World. So, anyways, with that, I'm out. Have a good one. Later.